Hello Rocket Troops and welcome back to the HQ Admin Shade here with my first ever episode of Rocket Roulette, the show where you learn to turn. This is the first ever dedicated rotation battle series on YouTube ever. Look it up. There are rotation battles on YouTube, but no one who looks at it from a strategic and team building standpoint, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to educate you beautiful people about how to rotation battle because a lot of people really don't like it that much, which I can kind of understand. So let me tell you why I can understand that. One, the game kind of shows it down your throat in certain areas of the game. You might have to battle a trainer that makes you do a rotation battle and it's super annoying and you don't like it, you're not used to the format, and you just really want to get it out of the way so you can go continue your game. Understandable, I get that completely. Um, another thing is, is that some people go into Lei WoW, and a lot of people do rotation battles so they can level up their Pokémon really fast. Um, I can also understand that as well because that can get monotonous. People kind of look at rotation battles and it's like, I'm tired of this, I do this all the time, just get my Pokémon raised up. So I get that as well. The cool thing though is that, like uh, VGC, Pokemon actually in the base game has dedication to rotation battles on the battle spot. So you can actually jump on a battle spot and get a rotation battle. So that's how I got a couple of the, the battles here. Also, rotation battles have a lot of merit, I think, that a lot of people don't count on. There's a lot of things that people don't know, and that's also why they don't like them. Obviously, people kind of fear what they don't understand. So I'm here to help you understand so that way we can all have more fun in this format that I actually think is kind of cool. So, let me go ahead and talk to you about rotation battles and tell you a couple things you may not be aware of. So stick around and we'll get to these battles here in a couple minutes. So, the first thing that you need to know about rotation battles. Unlike singles and all, unlike VGC, um, switching and rotating are not the same thing at all. So, whenever you rotate, your Pokémon technically goes into what I call reserve. So it's not a full switch. What I mean by that is things that would normally be cured or disappear whenever you switch out don't happen in rotation battles. So if you get confused, let's say, or if you get leech seated, status somewhat like that, um, if you get a stat raised, if let's say you do a dragon dance, sword dance, something like that, or if you get intimidated or stat lowered, it stays with you, even when you rotate out. So let's say I have a dragonite that does a dragon dance or two, that stat raise will stay with me whenever I swap out or rotate out and then rotate back in, so I still have that stat raise. Um, also, as you'll see here in a little while, I get leech seated, um, I got Leech Seeded on a Pokemon, I rotated it out thinking it would go away, rotated back in, and then the Leech Seed was still active. So, hacks are actually um, a decent part, I mean, hacks are pretty prevalent in rotation battles, but don't be scared away, uh, hacks are kind of everywhere, so, um, in pretty much all formats and all tiers, so, just stick around with me and let me talk a little bit more, hopefully I'll win you over. So, a couple of things that are also different, one being, is that in rotation battles you actually can turn and attack on the same turn. Unlike singles, switching does not count as your turn. So you can rotate and attack on the same turn. So um, actually team synergy is really really important, just as important as being able to learn how to avoid hacks and also what kind of abilities and stuff not to have and moves not to use in rotation battles. A lot of stuff that a lot of different moves and abilities that people would normally consider in rotation battles are actually not that useful. So things like uh, Natural Cure, obviously they don't really happen because um, stuff like Regenerator as well, you don't switch out like you would single, so that's not really that useful. Um, Prankster is actually pretty prevalent, I could definitely see Prankster as being a big part of this, but uh, like I said before, team synergy is really important. So whether is from my research that I did on uh, rotation battles is kind of common. Uh, so I actually brought part of my Dual Weather Volt Turn team, if you haven't seen that, please check out that video I have on YouTube. Um, but basically, I have this Politoed with Drizzle, but when you think about it, once I throw out Politoed with Drizzle, and once it like activates and stuff like that, I have eight turns of rain. It's not like singles where I could withdraw Politoed, and then rain runs out and I can throw it back again. Once I get my rain up, Politoed's not doing a whole lot. So. I didn't really realize that whenever I put this team together, but now I know um, weather is actually kind of useful, but um, you'll see in these battles it kind of helps me out a little bit, but I could definitely see how it could also be a hindrance with some members on your team. So what I mean by uh, synergy, what I was talking about, is that I set up Rain with Politoed, and then let's say that he leads off with his Greninja whenever I lead off with Politoed. Now, I'm going to be afraid that he's going to just go ahead and hit me with a Grass Knot or something that... Um, Greninja can really hurt Politoed with. So what I would be able to do would be to rotate into Minetric, Mega, and then do a Thunder, and then probably be hit by a Greninja's attack, but that's whatever, because I just hit it with a Thunder in the rain. So people, you can honestly be 
kind of, you think you're in a good spot, but it can very quickly change in rotation battles. Rotation battles have a really, really high prediction point. You have to try to think, when are they, how are they going to rotate, and when they rotate, what attack are they going to use? It adds like an extra prediction there that you have to make. So that's really interesting. You also have to keep in mind your switches, your uh, rotations, that you can try to kind of counter them in that way. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this first battle that I had against my Japanese opponent here on Battlespot. Um, as you can see here, you actually bring four members in a team, uh, similar to VGC or doubles on Battlespot, but actually you bring a team of six and pick four. You have three Pokemon that are out that are your rotators, and then one in reserve in case one of your Pokemon go down. So let's go ahead and get this battle started, and we'll get into it. Um, everybody, thank you so much for being here again and trying to give Rotation Battles a chance. I really appreciate it. I think that we can all have fun doing it, and I hope to do it a little more on our Twitch stream, so make sure you check that out. There's a link right there, so please check it out. Okay, so I go ahead and I lead off with my Politoed, and my Rotators, I actually have um, Rotom, and I also have my Manetric, as I kind of discussed earlier. So I set up Rain, and then my opponent leads off with this wonderful, beautiful Greninja, and I actually decide to rotate, and my opponent decides to rotate as well into the Lucario, and I decide to Mega here. So my original intention was to try to um, kill the Greninja right away, thinking that maybe he tried to stay in and do something to my Politoed, but he switched into Lucario, which is not a bad idea. So I Mega, he Megas, but I'm actually going to be faster, and I'm going to be able to use Thunder in this rain. So I go ahead and I pull off a Thunder here, and obviously I hit because I am in the rain, and I actually knock out the Lucario right away. Um, it's also kind of interesting to say that I also have some shorter battles here. My second one's a little bit longer, but this battle's only 10 turns. So here he sends out the Aegislash, and I decided to rotate into Rotom, and I actually go for the Will-O-Wisp and burn the Aegislash, which is very useful. He goes for the Sword Stance here. So, I mean, I think the burn was still definitely useful there. Aegislash does not like to take any kind of status whatsoever. And it's here I kind of start to get the idea that status could be very, very useful in rotation battles. So here I turn into Politoed, and I'm about to get hit by this Shadow Sneak really quick. And I decide to go ahead and switch into Politoed, thinking that maybe he'd want to go for another Swords Dance thinking that um, he'd be able to kind of counteract the burn that I just gave him. So here I decide to give him an Encore, so that way he's locked into Shadow Sneak at least, which is not bad. And so I'm kind of sitting pretty right now, the Age Slash is getting burned, and seeing as how he is Encored, he's not going to be able to go into his King Shield and stuff like that. So Polito can take those Shadow Sneaks pretty well, seeing as how I am physically invested, and I go for the Scald while it's in its Blade form. And uh, once it gets its leftovers, it gets just enough not to die from burn here. But I think it's really interesting um, that he was able to stay. I think Encore, stuff like Encore, Taunts, are actually going to be really useful in rotation battles. In general, there's going to be a lot of status moves that are going to be um, not used that often. A lot of abilities that are not going to be used that often that could be really useful. Um, one being Moody, if you know what Moody is. Or um, B-Barrel could also probably tear it up in uh, this format. But anyway, back to the battle. Um... The Aegislash is again stuck into doing Shadow Sneaks here, and I decide to switch into Manetric, or r rotate into Manetric, and I go for the Thunder to kill the Aegislash. Um, I was kind of looking to just kill whatever, but now he has two pokes down, and he only has these two rotators left, so I'm actually feeling pretty confident because I still have my Landers in the back. So here, I am just spamming, spamming, spamming Thunder over and over again because honestly, I am up in the rain still, and this is where weather is kind of cool, because like I said, these battles can either last very short or longer, depending on who you're facing, but um, I'm just taking full advantage of this weather, and I'm loving it. So I switch in Politoed to take the Iron Head and go for the Scald in the rain, which is obviously going to do a whole lot to Durant. I was hoping for the burn, not that lucky, but here rain stops. Now, as you can imagine, this battle's gone pretty my way, and I've been able to do things the way I want, but as you can imagine, again, once that rain runs out, my Thunder on my Manetric's not going to be that desirable, so rain is not as... Weather in general is probably not as um, helpful as maybe you'd think. So there I go for the Overheat once I switch into Manetric, and I'm able to kill the Durant, and that was my victory that I had against my Japanese oppo opponent. That was a well-fought battle. I, had the, I thought that was really fun. Had a whole lot of steel on her team, but it's all good. It was a whole lot of fun. I really appreciated that battle. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the second battle I had... This time against Pierre. Now, Pierre has a really interesting team. The first thing I noticed is that um, I was really afraid of the Ludicolo 
One, because it could take advantage of my rain, and I was kind of nervous about that. He actually made the right call with going for that, because he probably figured I would bring rain and would be able to benefit either from Swift, Sam Swift Swim, excuse me, or the rain dish. So the other thing was also the really scary prankster user in Sableye, seeing as how I kind of was getting the idea that hacks could really hurt me. Um, prankster Sableye was kind of a nightmare. So let's go ahead and just jump in this battle, and you guys can see what I mean. Ah, oh, I love rotate. Rotation battles are fun. We need to do rotation battles on stream. Make sure you check out our Twitch stream. Go ahead and give us a follow, please. Anyway, so my opponent sends out Porygon 2, sends out the Ludicolo and the Sable Eye, and I actually lead off the same exact thing that I led off with last game against my Japanese opponent. And here I um, am a little bit afraid just right away because the Ludicolo is out here and I don't know what it's going to try to do, and he immediately rotates into it, and I decide, decide to go for the Toxic, because again, hacks are going to be a bigger thing in rotation battles, and here he actually goes for the uh, Toxic as well. One thing I'm not sure about rotation battles, if you guys could comment and let me know, I think that um, how you get hurt by poison like more and more as time goes on, I don't know if that stays. So like if I stay in three turns with Politoed, with like while I'm poisoned, and it's doing a lot of damage. Whenever I rotate it back in, I'm not sure if I'm going to be taking a whole lot of poison damage after that turn is over, if that makes sense. So if you guys know that, uh, please let me know. So I switch into Manetric to try to do some work against this thing, but I go for the Thunder. I'm not really thinking about it being neutral, I think, because it's also grass. But it does over half, and I'm fine with that. But this is where I kind of got really weirded out in this battle. So he goes for the Leech Seed, and I'm like, okay... I understand, and then um, the Sableye is also really terrifying at this point because since I know this about status, I know that I'm leech seated for the rest of the game, so that's something to definitely keep in mind. Um, also confusion is a big part of this as well that I was trying to think about. So here we're both being hurt a little bit by poison, and the Ludicolo goes for the protect, which is actually smart because he has leftovers, rain dish, and leech seed working for him. Ludicolo, I could definitely see... Um, started to realize that maybe this was like a dedicated uh, rotation battle team on Pierre's part because it's honestly just a really good synergy synergy between his pokes and the hacks were just beautiful. So I'm assuming that he probably has the Rain Dance on his Ludicolo for himself, which he doesn't really need right now because I put up weather for him, so that's kind of unfortunate. But here I go for another Thunder, trying to kill this Ludicolo because this thing could honestly be a big problem. I almost kill it. I go, I come so close. And he goes for the Scald in the rain. Obviously does a whole lot of damage. Now he's going to be getting Rain Dish, Leftovers, and Leech Seed damage. So I'm just not going to be close. And my Manetric's almost dead. And I have accomplished almost nothing. So that's really unfortunate. Kind of discouraging. But I'm going to try to work through it in this battle. Um, at this point, I think I decide that my Manetric's not really worth saving all that much. And I'm really just trying to kill the Ludicolo because it could be a big problem. Um, here the Sableye switches in then, and actually uses Confuse Ray. So now I know that I am in deep doo-doo because he not only has the Leech Seed, but also has the Confusion Hacks combo, which will stay with all of my Pokemon as I rotate. So here I hit myself in Confusion, my Manetric goes down, so I'm forced to go into my fourth Pokemon that is in my reserve, which is my Landorus. Now Landorus isn't going to be doing all that much from what I can tell in this battle, especially because a lot of people run Physically uh, defensive Sableye, which here I can kind of see. He uses Substitute on Sableye, which I am not used to seeing. Kind of interesting. Um, I can definitely see how that would be a good thing to run on a rotation battle Sableye because you couldn't get hacked by somebody else. So that's really interesting. Here he goes for the Will-O-Wisp once I take down his sub, and now my Landorus is somewhat crippled. So it's doing even less damage, and this battle looks like it's not going to be going my way very much. So I decide... Um, that I should go for my Earthquake here. This is where I really, really decided that I made a bad decision in taking Landorus. Now, once you bring a Choice Scarf user or a Choice member of your team in general, once you lock yourself into a move from that Choice, you stay that way. So in rotation battles, once you attack with like a Choice Band, Choice Scarf, whatever, um, you are locked into that one move for the rest of the battle. So I could definitely see how choice items are probably not preferable unless you have a Pokemon whose move can take out like their entire team. So I highly recommend trying to not bring choice scarfed, choice banded, choice spexed pokes. So keep that in mind as well if you're trying to build a rotation battle team. 
Um, again, I get leech seated by the Ludicolo, and I'm just like, I can't, I, I won't be able to kill this thing. Like, between this and the confusion from Sableye, I am in deep trouble. I really am. So I'm taking toxic damage, I'm taking leech seed damage. Pierre is really showing me how mastering hacks can really do a lot of damage. This is why uh, the, Lu the Ludicolo died because of that poison damage. It took a lot of poison damage right there, more so than like if you switch out and switch back in while you're poisoned, like that little bit of damage you take. He took a decent amount of damage, so I'm actually thinking that maybe poison damage does stay with you, um, like you get badly and badly poisoned as the match goes on. So here, the Sableye comes out again and uses Confusion. I'm burned, I'm confused, I'm smacking myself in the face, I'm so confused. So. Really, Pierre is really educating me on how hacks heavy some of these teams can be and what maybe I can do in the future to try to counter it. I switch and Rotom here, just kind of going for a Hail Mary, and I go for a Hydro Pump just so I can break this up. I'm really trying to kill the Sableye. I'm going nowhere with this team at this point because he's able to do so much with the Sableye. Prankster users, I could definitely see, would be a huge force in rotation battles. So here I go for the Willow just to kind of get residual damage off on the Sableye. Um, I already have it off on his Aegislash, so maybe I'll be able to play the Hacks game too because I do have the Toxic with um, the Politoed. And he actually does what I want him to do and decides to switch into Porygon. This is the other cool thing about Encore. So he used Ice Beam earlier, I believe, uh, before he switches Porygon to out. And I decided to go for Encore. I thought it would fail, like in singles, because he didn't move yet. But seeing as how he moved before, he was just in reserve, I actually encored him back into Ice Beam. So that's really interesting. I had no idea that that was a thing either. So I switch back into Landorus. I am still confused, as you can see. The rotation does not cure it. And I go for Earthquake again, trying to do more damage, trying to kill this thing. But obviously, this Porygon is Eviolite, and I'm not going to be doing anything. It goes for the Ice Beam and takes out my Landorus. So at this point, I can kind of see that this battle's wrapping up. I have nothing for the Ludicolo, I have nothing for really any member of this team. Um, I'm just kind of desperately going for Hydro Pumps, Rotom's kind of helping me. But as you can see here, Weather kind of failed me, because, I mean, not that it would do really that much in this battle anyway, but once Weather kind of went down, I'm not going to be able to do as much with this team as I originally intended. So if you use Weather trying to make a, um, a rotation battle team, I would caution you to be careful with what you choose and how you choose it and how it could be affected by rotations, etc. So here, the Aegislash goes for the Sacred Sword and just about takes out my Rotom. Um, I do have the Citrus Berry on my Rotom. However, this battle's really just about over. There's not a whole lot I can do. I definitely think that Citrus might be a good item to have on your pokes here. Um, he actually goes into King Shield here, and I decide again my best option might be to just go for Encore, because if he decides to set up and or decides to just use King Shield like he did there, I'd be able to lock him into it. So now he's locked into King Shield and there's not a whole lot that he can do. He's probably going to be forced to rotate out. But again, I'm still Leech Seed. I'm Leech Seeded. So he could just sit there. I'm not going to be doing anything to him because he is Shield form. And I die to Poison. And I die to a, um, a good chunk of Poison damage. So I honestly do think that Poison stays with you and you just stay badly poisoned throughout the match. So that's something to really think about, to be honest. Um... So, the other thing here is I switch in my Rotom, and again, I try to get the burn on Aegislash, but he very cleverly kind of sees that coming. And honestly, I'm not going to be doing that much. He already switches into his burned Sableye, so there's nothing I can really do. Goes for the Confuse Ray. So now my Rotom's hexed pretty badly, and it's only a matter of time before I get smacked in the face by this team. So, um, definitely really interesting. I'm really enjoying this format. There's a lot of team building possibilities, like I said. I'm going to have to think, you know, what do I want to make on this team so that way I can take advantage of some of the things that make rotation battle teams good. Um, one might be a poison touch muck or something like that. That way I can't be poisoned and I can um, get people poisoned really quickly. So that might be something to think about. There's a whole lot of team building opportunities and I might do a team building video on rotation battles um, in this series. So. Here I get try attacked by this Porygon 2, and that's actually the end of the battle. Pierre takes me out. Really, really interesting two battles that I had. The first one went way better for me. Pierre kind of wrecked me in that second battle, but it was really interesting. I had a whole lot of fun doing it. Pierre, thank you so much for this battle. If you're somehow watching this video, everyone, I hope that you really enjoyed this rotation battle. Um, if you did enjoy it, 
please let me know down below in the comments. Give this video a like and also subscribe. Don't forget to do that. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know uh, your experience with rotation battles, what you think about what I told you about rotation battles, if maybe you're willing to give it a chance. So question of the day, are you willing to try rotation battles? So let me know what you think about my series. I'm happy to do it for you guys. I hope that I taught you something today. This is Admin Shade signing off for Rocket HQ.